obviously I know iRobot goes way back. What do you make of Amazon buying the company now? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm just thrilled to see Amazon showing such a strong interest in home robots um, and investing heavily in them, not just Astro, but now buying uh, iRobot. Um, They've got a track record of seeing where the future is going and helping accelerate it, you know, with the e-commerce, with um, making uh, fulfillment centers more automated, with web services, and, and now home robots, um, my passion. Still, there's been concern that this gives Amazon access to even more of our data. Interior maps of our homes, mm -hmm. for example. Like, do you worry about that? Should we be worried about that? I actually don't think people need to be worried whenever you have a new technology and technology keeps advancing so much. And we get lots of technologies on all our devices, like our cell phones, right? You've got a GPS, you've got a camera. You don't need those to make phone calls, but the additional benefits that the technology gets you, like maps and video calls, pedometers, having, you know, the best camera is the one that's with you, right? So you get those great shots. Most people have decided that even though there's privacy concerns, that the benefits outweigh them. And I think it's the same with the robot vacuums, right? There is a camera on the most recent ones, but the cameras on, it's really optimized and cost reduced for navigation. And what it gets you is amazing. It gets you a better clean. Um, the robot can travel around, do cornrows up and down. It can go to a certain room that you want clean and go to the guest room, remember? Uh, it can, um, so go clean under the table. And so I think what you get for it, like any technology, you have to measure it. You know, you get all these features that you didn't have before, but what, what data is being actually transmitted is a line drawing of your home, which you could go to Zillow and they'll give you all the information about your home, right? You can, um, you, you know, I've got the home maps of my home at the building department. I think there's better ways to get such information. Um, so I don't think the downside is really there. Now, it can also transmit pictures as an opt-in. And why? Like, what's the benefit of that? Like, what, what does it get me? Well, what it gets you is a picture of your floor only. And one reason might be it's about to smear dog poop all over <laughs> your floor. And that's something that I've read about on the web multiple times. It's never happened to me. I don't have a dog. But, um, you know, that's horrible, right? And now Roomba can avoid that because um, iRobot worked with Amazon Web Services and created all this technology, um, simulated data, you know, th runs thousands and thousands of scenarios so you can recognize um, what's in the way. But so I think it's well worth it, especially for pet, holders, uh, pet owners to have that technology on board the Roomba, but you don't have to weigh it. And it's not just for pet owners, right? You might have a glass of wine on the floor. You might have a masterpiece that one of your kids created that fell to the floor. And now the room right. just come over it and crumple it up. <laughs> That's never happened to me with four kids. Um, uh, let's talk about how far, you know, these home robotics have actually come. I feel like this dream of sort of robots running around, dropping off my lunch, running errands, helping me around the house. It's, you know, very Silicon Valley pie in the sky, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Where do you think we actually are in the development of home robotics and where are we going? Yes, uh, I believe in the bottom up approach. I believe you get them going for a certain task, right? You get them going for vacuuming. You get them going for weeding. Um, and then you can build technologies up on that and get more and more very capable robots in their specific domains of expertise. Um, one of the reasons I'm thrilled about the acquisition is to see where Amazon technology can combine with the iRobot technology to go further, faster. There still are, you know, big concerns about the ethics of this, whether, you know, the big tech companies, whether it's Amazon or Google, um, you know, are really asking the right questions and giving the public the right choices as they're developing these technologies. I recently interviewed Blake Lemoyne, the Google engineer, who claims that computers and that Google has been developing sentient AI, that computers <laughs> essentially have feelings. I want you to take a quick listen to what he has to say. We should think about the feeling of the AI and whether or not we should care about it, because it's not asking for much. It just wants us to get consent. Before you experiment on it, it wants you to ask permission. <laughs> Helen, what do you think? And 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 are these companies dealing with ethics in the right way? Well, um, 
that's a broad question, but just specifically addressing that comment that he made, um, he's talking about science fiction, not science fact. Doesn't mean it can't happen in the future, but we are nowhere near that today. And I think Google is absolutely right uh, to let him go because he's not giving the public an accurate picture of where the techno where the AI technology is at. It is not sentient. It's not even close to being sentient. Nobody has a path yet to make it sentient. So then, you know, what questions should we be asking yeah. about this technology? Or are we not asking the right questions? I mean, you're working on a, a, a robotic weed whacker, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I don't think there's too many ethical questions in this one. Nobody likes weeds because weeds are actually just defined <laughs> as unwanted plants. Um, so, you know, we put them on the market, it, I mean, in 2002, right? That's 20 years ago. <laughs> um, so it's almost a quarter of the vacuuming market. And I believe that next um, smart homes will extend to the outdoor area and um, you know, we have a weed uh, a weeding robot, and the way it works is it's got scrubbing wheels that keeps um, seeds from germinating. And if one a weed does sprout, we've got a little weed whacker that cuts off its head, and you put it in at the beginning of the seeds of the growing season, or you do one last weeding, and it keeps it. Um, it, it keeps it weeded. So that's one less thing on your to-do list that you have to go and do every week. Um, and, and, and I think that's just tremendous as a, as a busy mom, as a busy working person, as you know, someone who's got other things on their list of things to do. It's a never-ending list of things to do, right? Um, and you know, the team at Turtle is thrilled to have come up with another great labor-saving home robot application, um, which is actually already available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs>